With me is the laptop that you've been waiting to see, the completely redesigned Asus G14 for 2024. It's slimmer, it's lighter, it looks stunning, and it has one of the brand new AMD Ryzen 8000 series processors inside. Our G14 has the Ryzen 9 8945HS processor, an NVIDIA RTX 4070 and 32GB of memory. Do not be fooled by AMD's naming convention. The initial number of 8 means it is a processor released this year. However, the third character being a 4 means it is based on the Zen 4 architecture from last year. Anyway, this processor replaces the Ryzen 9 7940HS found in last year's model. It has the same number of cores, frequency, power draw and cache. It also has the same integrated 780M GPU. So, I went into this review expecting very little difference in CPU performance. The only real advertised difference is that this year's processor comes with a more powerful AI neural processor unit. This laptop, as I said, has been completely redesigned and boy does it look stunning. We have the Platinum White model, I saw it and the Eclipse Grey model at CES and I believe the White model looks nicer. The laptop is noticeably thinner than the G14s of prior years, and the white model in particular, it looks sleek, stylish, contemporary and minimal. My only issue with the design is that the prominent light bar on the top of the laptop looks loud and at odds with the overall aesthetic. Ethan agrees with me, but Taylor likes it. I'm a gaming enthusiast and I like it. I think the slash light adds to the aesthetic. It's fun and on a gaming laptop, I think that that just makes sense. When it comes to the feel of the laptop, it's very solidly built. There is pretty much no keyboard deck flex and minimal screen flex. That being said, the material doesn't feel as premium as a MacBook's, but it's definitely in the upper echelons of a laptop chassis material. The laptop is very light and portable for the performance it offers. It weighs over 100 grams less than last year's model and significantly less than the Blade 14. Also, due to the lower power draw of this year's RTX 4070, it comes with a smaller 180 watt charging brick. That's in comparison to the 240 watt one from last year. By the way, they have redesigned the barrel pin to a smaller rectangular one, so it fits this new slim chassis. That means if you have an older Asus G series charger, it won't fit this laptop. You do have the option of USB-C charging though up to 100 watts. The port selection hasn't actually changed this year and the port speeds are on screen right now. However, port placement has improved. Prior models had the ports placed very far forward on the laptop. Plugging anything into them got in your way, which was annoying. On the topic of annoyances, the USB-C port on the right side still doesn't support charging, only the one on the left. This often catches me off guard as I'll plug a power cable into it only later to realize my laptop isn't charging. This also means both charging capable ports are on the left side, so you'll have to run a cable around the back if your outlet is on the other side of the laptop. Plus it's about time that the right side USB-C port was updated to USB 4.0 speeds. The display is stunning. It's color accurate, high resolution, fast refresh rate, and it's an OLED panel. On the surface, it looks like the same 14 inch one that we've seen many other laptops use this year, the ZenBook 14 and the Spectre 14 for example, but it's actually a better one. It's a little brighter than those displays and it doesn't suffer from the graininess issue that those laptops do. Basically, when you stare at white content on those screens from about 12 inches or less away, you see some dots on screen. I personally don't do this though, I sit about 18 inches away. Anyway, the G14 screen is variable refresh rate and it also supports G-Sync. It also automatically switches from its max 120Hz back to 60 when you pull out the power, and that helps with battery life. My only nit with this panel is at this price point, I do wish it was a bit brighter. It isn't as bright as last year's 500 nit panel. Plus, last year's model was a matte display, so you don't have to deal with any reflections. A brighter panel would have helped combat this. The keyboard is very comfortable. Key presses feel like they have a good amount of travel and a satisfying click. The keyboard layout is standard, which is great news. Many keyboards have special keys like dedicated page up and down keys placed in odd locations that cause you to accidentally miss hit the key you're going for. Not here. And if you do need page up, down, home and end keys, they are secondary functions built into the arrow keys. The backlight of this keyboard unfortunately does not completely light up the secondary function of each key. So, in low lighting conditions you'll struggle to see the FN numbers. Normally, when a keyboard's backlight does not fully eliminate both characters on each key, I recommend that people change the individual key's colour. That way you can differentiate which key is which. Unfortunately, the backlight is only a single colour on this laptop, so you can't actually do that. You'll have to rely on squinting. The trackpad is outstanding. Asus G-Series laptops have had phenomenal trackpads for a while now, and this one is top notch. Tracking is super accurate, and I notice no palm rejection issues. That being said, the click itself requires a little more force than I'd like, but that's the only thing holding this back from perfection. 
Speaker volume is very good. However, the sound quality is merely average. Compared to the MacBook Pro 14, which has the best speakers in a 14-inch laptop, the G14 is lacking in the range of sound it can produce. So, in comparison, the sound ends up sounding a little flat, tinny and lacks bass. The laptop's 1080 webcam, it looks good enough, it sounds good enough, and by the way, the laptop does have Windows Hello facial recognition. On upgradability, the PCI 4.0 SSD is upgradable, and so is the Wi-Fi 6E card. The memory, unfortunately, this year is not. For comparison, the Framework laptop does have upgradable memory in a similar size chassis. However, that laptop doesn't have a dedicated GPU and the additional cooling required. So it is understandable that the memory here is soldered to save space. With that said, let's take a look at CPU performance, starting with Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks. You can see that this year's G14 is actually a good amount faster than last year's model, which is a nice surprise, and we'll talk about why that is so later in the video. Compared to an Intel processor that it competes against, the i9-13900H from last year, in multi-core, this laptop slightly beat it out. But in single-core, it lags a decent amount behind. If you're wondering how it compares to one of Intel's new Core Ultra Media Lake processors, it performs slightly better than the Spectre 14 for 2024 in this particular test. In Cinebench, which tests how the processor performs under max load, we can see once again this year's G14 is actually a nice step forward, but it still lags a bit behind Intel in single and multi-core. However, the gap has been reduced. Now, in this test, it significantly beats out the Spectre 14 for 2024 in multi-core performance, but that laptop feeds its processor substantially less power and has the benefit of feeling way cooler to the touch than this one. Back on the G14, I have been very careful to say that this year's model beats out last year's, but not to say that it is due to the change in the processor itself. That's because when you look at power draw, this year the G14 feeds its processor a bit more power. And this year's model also has significantly higher clocked memory at 6400 MHz versus 4800. Given that this year's AMD processors are basically the same thing, I'm willing to bet that this year's G14 performs better in CPU tasks due to that higher power draw and faster memory. Now, because this year's model is being fed more power, it is a little less efficient. This isn't surprising, as most processors suffer from diminishing marginal returns when you feed them additional power. But it's still much better than Intel's 13th gen offering. And when we look at the Spectre 14, its Core Ultra processor does look good here, but that's because, as I said, it's just not fed as much power. And on the efficiency of these processors, Apple's MacBook Pros with the M3 chips just continue to destroy all of them. When we look at thermals during maxed out CPU performance, the operating temperature in this year's model is significantly hotter. That being said, this chassis redesign does really pay off. This laptop feels a decent amount cooler than last year's on the keyboard deck. However, it is a fair bit warmer on the underside. I like this trade-off. You see, most people who run high-performance tasks on their laptop will likely have it on a desk. Fan noise though, for this use case, it's a little worse unfortunately, but it's still actually not that bad when compared with other high-performance laptops. Now, before we leave CPU performance, I do want to note that our performance tests were done on Asus's default mode, which is their performance mode. However, they do have a turbo mode. That mode delivers a tiny bit of extra performance for a lot of extra wattage, a ton of extra fan noise, and some additional heat you feel, so we don't recommend it. When it comes to graphics performance, this laptop does support NVIDIA's Advanced Optimus. This year's G14 maxes out at an RTX 4070, whereas prior years went right up to a 4090. I think this makes sense in a laptop this small, as it's unlikely to be able to dissipate the heat required to adequately cool those higher tier components. Now, this year's RTX 4070 draws less watts of power than last year's RTX 4060, a total of 90 watts including dynamic boost, versus 125 watts of our unit from last year. That's because Asus realized that these NVIDIA GPUs see little additional performance when you feed them more than about 100 watts of power. That being said, this year's gaming performance, at least shown in TimeSpy, is a little worse than our model from last year, with the RTX 4060. It's also a decent amount worse than the Blade 14, which has an RTX 4070, just like this laptop. And this same result plays out in our Cyberpunk benchmark. So, net-net, you're paying for an RTX 4070, but really getting a 4060. Just like other RTX 4000 series laptops though, you can use Nvidia's excellent DLSS 3 for additional frames, but it just doesn't change this story. For real world gaming experience, Josh played a couple hours of League, but of course this laptop can handle that, so I played CS2. 
Overall, I enjoyed the experience. I wasn't overly distracted by the warmth and I didn't get sweaty palms like I do on some other gaming laptops. The biggest negative was the hotspots above the regular keyboard. If you try to use the macro keys to say, turn down your volume, you are going to notice it is way hotter than the rest of the keyboard. Let me sum up heat and fan noise for you. In light use, this laptop is pretty quiet. If you hold the laptop up to your ear though, you can hear the fans constantly going. And you will hear them spin up during tasks like installing a program, but it's just not that bad. But, 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 there is something I must bring to your attention. When this laptop's fans are audible, you hear a high-pitched noise coming from them. All three of us clearly heard it. It's not loud, but it is there. It's the kind of thing that if you use the laptop for a short time, you probably won't notice it. But after you use the laptop for an hour or so, it will definitely wear on you. That being said, the volume of that high-pitched sound is not that loud. So if you are in a room with even the slightest background noise from say an air conditioner, you probably won't notice it. Now, I want to be clear, this laptop does feel very warm to the touch under extended use. And like the Razer Blade 14, once this laptop's aluminium chassis heats up, it just doesn't cool back down. During gaming, it gets particularly warm on the right side. If you are using a mouse though and are right-handed, this probably isn't much of an issue for you as you just don't have your hands on that part of the laptop all that much. Even in light use though, when I was writing the script for this very video, this laptop felt very warm to the touch. That being said, I'm super sensitive to warm feeling laptops and I found this one bearable, but a little distracting. When it comes to performance on battery, there is no drop in performance on this year's model, which is good to see. To test battery life, we dimmed the screen to 200 nits, confirmed the screen was at 60 hertz, and ran a Netflix movie on repeat over Wi-Fi for four hours. At the end of the test, we had 46% remaining. This is pretty darn good, especially given the category of laptop that this is in. It smashed the Blade 14 and significantly outperformed last year's model, even though it has a slightly smaller battery. Props to Asus's power tuning for this year's model. When we look at high performance tasks on battery, which I don't recommend you do as it degrades your battery, it performs as you'd expect when you look at the competition. All right, let's talk pricing. The RTX 4060 version has an MSRP of $1,600 US dollars with 16 gig of memory and one terabyte of storage. And the RTX 4070 version has an MSRP of $2,000 for 32 gig of memory and the same one terabyte of storage. I am getting the RTX 4060 version in and I'll be very interested to see how that performs. If it performs similar to this laptop, it will suck that Asus is basically charging $400 to get this laptop with 32 gig of memory. I think a lot of people will want that upgrade, especially as memory is now not upgradable. That kind of price gouging is normally associated with another manufacturer. All right, let's wrap. Last year, we became experts on 14 inch laptops. We literally got them all in and tested them side by side extensively. The Asus G14 from that year was one of the best 14 inch laptops. Its main issue that prevented it being number one was that it got very warm to the touch, it felt a little bit big and clunky, and its ports were very far forward and got in your way. Well, this year's Asus G14 goes a long way to solving those issues. It doesn't feel quite as warm to the touch as last year's model, even though it's still a warm laptop, its ports are in a better place, it looks better, and it delivers a more premium experience. Plus, it gives you better battery life. However, there are new issues with this year's version. Its RTX 4070 underperforms. There is that high-pitched fan noise that you will notice in a silent room, and its memory isn't upgradable. So, I'm gonna speak personally, as I'm the kind of buyer who would be interested in this laptop. It's portable, and its performance makes it very versatile for my use case. I can code on it, I can edit videos on it, I can game on it, and it's a good portable laptop for light tasks like office work and browsing the web. And since Asus laptops regularly go on sale, if I found this laptop for say $200 off, would I buy it? Well, yes, yes I would. I think it's a good laptop, and its downsides for me are manageable. But, 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 I'd probably wait to see how HP's new Omen Transcend 14 performs before shelling out my hard-earned cash for this laptop, just in case it has less of the downsides that I called out in this video, in particular the heat you feel. So make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on because that review, it's coming quicker than you think. Well, that's all I got for you. Do check out our website. That's where you'll find the complete list of laptops that we recommend for various types of users. And you'll find links there to the best sales that we can find on them, including this G14. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I'll catch you later.